Oh yeah, it's Becky. Um, and I am ready to swatch my fourth generation Paul Rubens paints because they have mostly dried down. There are a couple that are still a little tacky to the touch. Um, but for the most part, they are going to be dry enough that I can swatch them and see how they paint down. Um, now for that, I've got my ideolocation cards that I can keep with my palettes to tell me where everything is. Where's the other one? It's underneath here. There we go. And I've already pre-written the names of the uh, the pigments and the, the names of the colors on this. Um, I am also going to be doing it on my large swatch sheets, the ones that go in the swatch folder, um, but I'm going to do that after I paint them. I will uh, write in the name up here on top where I've left some blank space with some tape, and we'll do the pigment information down at the low, but that way I can have uh, just paint on these when we do this. Um, this paper, by the way, is Layton, 100% cotton, cold press, it's a watercolor block, and I have two of them, which is why I'm doing this, because that way I can swatch on both of them without having to remove uh, the paper off the top block. I can move that aside and then swatch on the second one. And these are, um, it's actually B paper because they were already cut to this size and I didn't want to cut paper to a different size. Um, and this will do. Uh, one of the nice things is I can set this on there and then I could stack these on top of each other makes it really convenient, um, especially for storing them. So that is something that I'm going to be able to do. Um, but I wanted to, I went and got my, uh, the old version of the Paul Rubens, the, I guess, Gen 3, the one prior to this one, which comes in a box that looks like this. And you've seen paint tubes. I don't need to show that to you. But uh, that's what I have in this palette and I actually had a second box of these that I got um, to refill these when I needed them so this is what I have in here and one thing that I noticed when I was doing all of these is that about a third of the paints that came in this iteration a third of them are single pigment and the rest of them are at least two pigments um, I don't think any of them are three pigment, but uh, many of them were like two pigment. And there are not that many that were single pigment. Like you've got the raw sienna and the yellow ochre, basically the same one. <laughs> you've got the viridian and thalo green, um, the thalo blue, the Prussian blue, and the ultramarine. Um, like this cobalt blue is really... Uh, it's just ultramarine and white, so it's not like actually like PB28 or anything. Um, the ivory black is two different blacks mixed together. So I think that these paints, they went out and formulated it instead of mixing two pigments together to get a color. They said, let's just use a pigment that creates that color because with the new version, um, I went through and just did a star next to all the ones that had more than one pigment in them. And it's mostly greens, but there's a couple of others like the Azure Blue. Um, it does have a white in it. The Brilliant Blue Violet is a mixture of basically the Ultramarine and the Dioxazine Violet. Um, Sap Green, of course, that's going to be PY153 and PG7. May Green as well, basically. I guess different mixes of those two pigments, olive greens and uh, the brown umber. But like the black here is going to be just PBK9. Um, so indigo is also a mixture. But most of these yellows, most of the yellows and the oranges and the reds are single pigments. Like you've got the Naples yellow that's multi pigment and the 
Indian red, white, no, Venetian red. I switch these around. That's why there's a little arrow there. So that's going to confuse me when I'm painting, but the arrows should help with that. Um, but yeah, so it's it's going to be real interesting. Um, I'll read out the pigments as I'm swatching too, so you guys can see them. But I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. Get I'm going to do these later because um, since they're right next to each other and I don't have tape between them, I'm going to have to paint them like every other one and then let them dry and then paint the other ones in between. So that's going to be a project probably tonight. Um, I like to relax with watercolor. Um, I go to my room and hang out on my bed with my dogs and paint. <laughs> you know, I've got like a couple of water cups that I keep on my nightstand. And uh, these are small enough. I can just tape them down to a little artboard and uh, bring this in there and do my, my little swatches there. But for right now on camera, I'm going to do the big swatches. So let me put this away. Again, this is the version that we are swatching. It's the new Artist Watercolor version for Paul Rubens. Huh, I wonder what the quote is from. My passion comes from the heavens, not from earthly musings. I'm going to have to look that up. Because I didn't actually notice that quote before now. Um, you know, I always find new things. So let me get my waters. I got clean water and rinse water. And I'm probably going to mix these two up because that's what I do. And then I'm going to set this one here for right now. So we will get to it in a minute. And then we are going to start with this. Just go down the line with swatching. Yeah. Actually, let's just move you completely out of the way. I don't need you in my life right now. And my water here, this here. And see how nicely it fits right next to my block? I love this. I love this, actually. Let me pull this over here. So that there. Ah, that's pretty rad. Okay, yeah, this is new. I'm I'm excited about the palette too. This is this is real fun for me. Um, all right. So I'm gonna put you there, and I'm gonna set this here so I can read off of it while I'm doing the swatching. All right, so let's get to it. Clean right, water. I am using for my brush. It is this. Um, let, me, let me show it to you. It is this Widem Art Quill Brush. I've actually been quite happy with these. Um, it holds a ton of water, so that's one of the reasons I'm using it is because I can use it on the larger swatches here. I'm going to probably use a smaller brush for. Um, my idiolocation ones, but this is going to be great for my swatching, and so I'm using it. Um, one of my favorite things about this is that it's got an acrylic handle, so I don't have to worry about the wood splitting after continued use. I've had it for a couple of months. I haven't had any stray hairs in my painting, and it keeps its point pretty well, as you can see. Um, it's been, I it came in a whole set. They've got different sizes, and um, find that it's one of the brushes that I happen to grab pretty frequently when I'm just doing some painting. So if you wanted to get some of these, they're fairly cheap and they're pretty decent brushes in my opinion. Um, I might do a link at the bottom. I don't have affiliate links. So if you wanted to get some of these, you could, I don't know if there's a YouTuber or uh, somebody that you like to click through their links to support. You can click one of their links and then do a search for Flydom. Or if you don't care about that, you can just go ahead and click my link. Again, it's not affiliate, so like I'm not getting money for it, but I do appreciate these brushes. All right. So let's get this first one. It is over here in the corner. And the reason I wanted to dry these is because I wanted to see how well they rewet. Um, Part of how I learn and discover about my new watercolors is seeing how well they rewet, how well they paint. Um, this one is the Naples yellow. 
And it is three different pigments all together. PW6, PY53, and PBR24. That paints out pretty nicely there. Now, the um, previous iteration of the Paul Rubens had Naples yellow red instead of Naples yellow. And you can see there's a pretty stark difference between the different colors. Like this one is uh, PY42 and PO43. So like this one is definitely more of a yellow yellow and definitely much less of a white people flesh color. So... <laughs> it's just Naples yellow, not Naples yellow red. Right, and then the next is PY3. This is the lemon yellow. I'm expecting this to be a nice bright yellow because all of my other PY3s are nice and bright. Look at that. Actually, I tried to adjust my color um, settings to get better coloring, and this is much brighter in person than it is on screen. So I don't know what to do about that. Like, yeah, it'll be fine. I do like it though. It is definitely a lemony, lemon yellow. The next one is Cad Yellow Light, which is also lemony. Um, I'm expecting a bit more opacity from it though, because it is a cadmium yellow. And yep, there it is. More opacity on that one. Uh, I bet that is gonna make some great greens to mix with some things. Yeah, the uh, pigment for this one is uh, PY35, because also the pigment on the cadmium yellow medium right here, which again, we're going to get some opacity, I'm sure of, but it is warmer. It's cad yellow, cad yellow medium. Too much water. Maybe this was a big mistake. I just need to tap it better. All right, next one. After CAD medium yellow is we got to the corner. And my, yeah, there we go. Let's wipe some of that off. And the corner here is Indian yellow. It's PY83. Oh, I love this. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a little bit granulating. It's such a warm color. It's so warm. Reminds me of summertime. All right. Next one here in the corner is Earth Yellow. This is PY42. It's same as the raw sienna and yellow ochre from the previous version. So we're going to see how, which one of those, it's more like if it's the raw sienna or the yellow ochre um, when we put it down. It seems like they put more pigment in it than in the previous version of this paint. And it is definitely more like the yellow ochre than the raw sienna. For that color. Uh, next one, right here along the side, this is translucent yellow. And this is PY150. Um, 
What is going to be interesting pigment? It's something that gets added to, I think, a lot of greens. It has a nice golden quality to it. And then it's got these really bright undertones. This, I think, is going to be a really fun yellow to use. And I can see myself mixing it with things like some of the earthy reds to make more golden colors. But yeah, this is a nice golden yellow. All right, then we've got chromium orange, PO62. This one right here. It is such a bright orange. This is gonna be like tiger orange. Like it's just a purely orange color. I love it. Okay, next one is Cad Red Light. It's this one right here. And it's very orange too. Oh, you like, you like, I'm not normally an orange guy. But yeah, I do like that. Some of this extra moisture and cap this off on my paper towel here. Okay. Now, I don't do this, but like, I really love the way it looks. Uh, Miranda Watson does um, a sprinkle of salt on her swatch charts and it looks fantastic and amazing. And there's like good reasons that she does it. Um, and there are times that I'm like, maybe I should do that too. I don't have to go through and like re-swatch all of my paints, which I mean, you know, that might be a real fun project. Not for today. Not for today. And for right now, I just want this to be consistent with my other swatch sheets. So this one is, oh, geez, I got that mixed up. This is transparent orange. Transparent orange is PO71. This is Cad Red Light. <laughs> Cad Red Light is PR108. Boy, I messed that up. Sorry. Uh, this is what I get for... Not practicing. Nobody practices for the Spanish Inquisition. Like that one. It's got a bit of a glare. But it is... Good bright red. It's not too opaque. Sometimes like the cadmium reds can be pretty opaque. Um, but it's not too opaque. This next one here on the list is Cad Red Light, the Burnt Sienna. And the Burnt Sienna is a, this is a two, two pigment mix. It's PR101 and PBK9. That's black. Not, but it looks like just enough to darken this up a little bit. And my dog is begging for pets underneath the uh, the table here. Let me just put this, rinse this off, and set it aside, and you guys can see my sweet dog, Ellen. What are you doing, silly girl? What are you doing? It's okay, baby. This is what she does. She just is like, I need legs. And she sticks her head in your legs. 
because she's a silly girl who needs her emotional support human, and that is me right now. So I'm going to go take care of my dog, and then I'm going to get back to my swatching in a Okay, so my dog is watching stuff out of a window now. She's quite happy with that. She just needs me to be there to make it okay for her to go up to her little window bed that I bought so she could lay there and look out the window. Um, and then after she's settled, she's fine with me just walking away. I'm just glad that I get to work from home so that <laughs> she can have me with her during part of the day. Anyway, I'm going to grab some water and wet this pyrrole ruby red, which is a red that I'm very excited about. It is like, it's like a true red. It is a very red red. This is my first time having this as a pigment in my palette. It is PR254. Yeah, it travels. It's really fun. I might do um, some paintings tomorrow to test this out. Um, but for right now, I'm only doing swatching. Okay, next is Quinacridone Rose. And it is a very vibrant color. And it looks muted on my camera. Again, I tried to get my camera settings to pick up the color better, but if I increased the saturation, everything was just oversaturated too much. So this is close, but no cigar because it's just not as great as in person. Um, I will take actual photos when I'm done with this and put it as my uh, my thumbnail so you can see the colors a little bit better in that. Well, yeah, this is PV19. For this one, which is also the same pigment as the quinacridone violet, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Um, but I guess they were treated differently or something like that. I don't know how pigments are made. I just like to paint with them. This is Pyrene Maroon. And I told you my story about Maroon. Hi, I like you. Hello, my new friend. Uh-huh. Like, it looks real brown on camera, but it's not very brown at all. It is... It's more of a Bordeaux. The next one is Venetian Red. which is I'm down here. Um, and I believe it is just PR 101. This is going to be a little more opaque because that's just what happens with this pigment. I love it. Oh, I still love that. Wait. If these are seeping underneath my tape, or if I'm just being sloppy with where I put my paint. But we'll find out when we take the tape off, won't we? It's just washi tape. It's just really skinny washi tape. It's great for, for swatches. I love it for that. Um, all right, Indian Red. And this one is the Venetian Red plus PR206. So it's PR101 and PR206. So it should have a bit of opacity as well. Ooh. 
Yeah, it does. This is just a really, really fun palette for reds and yellows. Let me tell you. Really fun palette for reds and yellows. I am excited to create with this. This is going to be great. I am. I have zero regrets about this purchase. Zero regrets. I think it is seeping under, isn't it? That's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. Okay, next one. There's only two more left on this palette. It is the Quinn Quinacridone Maroon. Which, geez, I wish you guys could see. What a great... What a fantastic pink this is going to make. This is going to make some amazing pinks. I'm really excited about using this. I am probably going to do a cherry blossom painting pretty soon. And I'm going to use this for the pink in my cherry blossoms. Because you can't see how bright and vibrant it is. And I wish my camera was not such a stupid camera. I need to get a better camera, guys. Because... This is just such a delicate pink. Especially down here in this part of it. Yeah. Maybe, I wonder if the yellows are throwing off the white balance on this. If I bring it closer, can you see it better? Nope, it still looks muted and washed out. Well, that's fine. I will just have to live with my muted and washed out purples and pinks. And then the last but not least, right here in the very last corner, is my Quinn Violet. And it is TV19 again. And the original version, we still had a PV-19 permanent red violet is what they called this one, and that one was still quinacridone rose. Um, but I did have a cool quinacridone maroon. So seems to me like this quinacridone rose is redder than this one, and this is more like the pink that was, and then this quin violet is... Yes, a lot more purple. Like I said, this is just a real great fuchsia color. This is super fuchsia. Back to the fuchsia. This is magenta. This is fuchsia. I love it. Right, so this is my warm palette. And that is all swat. So I'm going to let this dry. And then when it's all dry, I'll take the tape off and write in the colors and their pigments. And then this will go in my uh, binder for swatches for reference, along with, you know, this, this one. And then once they're all labeled, I'll take some pictures and use it for the thumbnail so you guys can see the colors better <laughs> for this video. Maybe I'll do like an outro post or something. Yes. So now. My cool color palette. Ooh, baby. All right, first up on this one is Dioxazin Violet, not Quinn Violet, and it is PV23. Um, now, there was a permanent blue violet in this palette, but it was PV19 and PV29. So this is a bluish violet without 
having to mix pigments for it. And, oof, baby. I think when I was just pouring it, that's, I showed you guys how it was painting out. And I am in love with this color. In love with it. Yeah, we're going to take pictures so you can see it better because this does not do it justice. Not at all. Okay, next one is Brilliant Blue Violet. And that is PV29 and PV23, which I think it was supposed to take the place of this permanent blue violet. Having PV29 in it is not very granulated. Let's travel real well, though. Yeah, I do like it, though. Look at that flow. Oops. Yeah. I'm going to be using. Yeah, I'm going to do a painting with these. Now, French Flu, that is PV29. Or ultramarine, as they call it everywhere. I think this is a fine ultramarine because it isn't super granulating, I don't think. And that's fine because I'm not, I mean, it still granulates. You can see already that it's doing that on this paper. with this okay and now in and prone blue this is a blue that i'm excited about because i have not used this before i've not had it in palette and i have seen some reviews of it i've seen where some people have added it to their palettes um, in place of like an indigo or something like that and it is a moody yet Right, blue. And I mean, it's like if Prussian blue went to therapy. It is gorgeous. And I am going to probably use it for a lot of stuff. This is like a perfect deep ocean blue, like into the deep type of ocean blue. Uh, 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 I love it. Calm down, Becky. I just get way too excited about blues and violets and oranges and yellows and all of the different colors. I need to calm myself down. So this is the Berlin blue. This is the next one. Oh, this was PB60, by the way. PB60. Um, Berlin blue, PB27. It is Prussian blue, I guess. Probably. Like you can see them side by side, they both ha are moody, but they're moody in different ways, you know. This is a real warm moody, and this is a real cool moody, you know. Actually, I should probably swap places with those two. I think In and Throne um, is more a warmer blue than even the ultramarine sorry it doesn't have to be in order any specific order we're fine okay so azure blue is another one that is a mix of two pigments it is pw4 and pb153 it's this azure blue over here in this corner Chris, oh, such a pretty blue. Look at this blue. Oh. Oh. 
we're just gonna look at my blues for a while. You guys can hang out right there. I'm just gonna look at these because they're just. All I want to do is paint skies now. Nothing but skies. Only skies. Only skies. Only blue skies. Okay, cobalt blue light. Let's move on. That is this one right here. Now, this one with the cobalt blue, it is PB29 and PW6, but this one is the actual cobalt blue pigment. It is the PB28. Instead of being a mix of pigments to get like that hue, it is just that, um, that one. And the cobalt is a little opaque sometimes, and that's okay because this isn't as opaque as the other one with the white added to it. I mean, all in all, I'm finding that the newer versions of these are so much better than the old. Like, these are still good paints. These are great paints. I enjoyed using them. I will continue to use them um, probably more for value studies than um, and other things. Um, because these ones are the ones that I want to paint with for, for other stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be great. I think, honestly, student professional, if you're like judging the differences between them. All right. Translucent turquoise is PD16. That's this one right here. Let me pick that up. And I'm sorry, but we're heading into the turquoises. Um, I don't even know if that's the plural for that word or not, but I'm going to just, I'm going to need a moment with my turquoise colors because they are so, I need you to respect my privacy. Um, so, ooh, turquoise. So pretty. Look at that. You can't even see how beautiful that is on this camera. My shitty, shitty camera. It's so beautiful. My cobalt blue turquoise. That's this one right here. And I know this is a color that other brands have in their palettes too. Um, this is the first time I've had it in a... Uh, Sorry, I'm distracted by picking up paint. It's the first time I've had it in, in a, uh, a Paul Rubens, but I've had it in a Paul Rubens palette. Uh, PB28 is the pigment for this. Same as this one, but obviously treated a little bit nicer. Better or worse. I don't know how they do this. This is yeah. the light. So it is a little more opaque. But it has this really lovely, lovely turquoiseosity. That's a word now. I'm making it a word. Paul Webster. Turquoiseosity is a word now. Um, cobalt turquoise deep. Now this one is a PG, so we're heading into the the green pigments. It's PG twenty six. Ooh. It's definitely pine trees. Definitely pine trees, like roots, loose roots. It isn't technically a pine tree, by the way. All right. Putting into our greens. I just, uh, I need a minute with my booth. The blues are so beautiful. Look at all these blues. There's so many things that you could paint with these blues. There's so many things you could mix with these blues. So many different ways you could make some colors with them. I'm excited about that. All right. Next is Oriental Green. That's PG7 right here. Thalo Green. It's Thalo Green, guys. But they're calling it Oriental Green for whatever reason. I don't know. Paint this out. We're gonna paint it out. 
freaking out about it. Oh, it is me. Look, it is me. I'm I'm the one doing that to myself. I am the one ruining this. It's my fault. It's all my fault. All right, hold on just a sec, because I... We got to make some noises in my house, so I'm going to hit pause on this and be right back. Okay, I am back, and I did have some more time with my blues, so that that was very fortuitous. Um, I think that's how you pronounce that word. We'll find out. Somebody tell me if I pronounced that right in my comments. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So here we are rounding the corner, and we are heading to Sap Green first. It's this one right here. It is two pigments. It is PY153 and PG7. So a lot of these are going to be PG7 based greens, which is great because PG7 is a great green for mixing things. This one's got a nice yellow undertone from the PGY153, the yellow. Still, it's a good green, I think. I like this green. I think this is really great green for grasses. Grasses would be great with that. All right, so May Green, it's also, it's PY 151 and PG7. And it is going to have a lot more yellow undertones to it. Like on this one, we had a permanent yellow green, and that was uh, PY 154 and PG7, which um, it's not the same as like the permanent green or any of these other ones that, that we had. Like these were all the greens that I had with that. Um, and they're not that different from these greens, but they're different. So here we go. I love this green. It's gonna be a fun green. It is very bright actually. Like it's real toned down on the, uh, on the screen there, you should see it better when I take pictures for the thumbnails, which means this will probably get posted tomorrow after I add photos and these have dried and I've got the human information listed on my swatch sheets. All right, so olive green right here, this one. And you know what I like? I like that these wells are all big enough that I can fit like most of a brush in here and this is a big brush it's a big boy all right this olive green is very olive I like it and it is uh what is it PO62 and PG36 so it is not a PG7 color Oop. And then we have olive green dark, which is PO62, and this is the PG7. So this lighter olive green is PG36, and then this one here has PG7 and the orange PO62. This may be more of a forest green and not a dark olive. If I was naming these, I'm not in charge of naming these things. That's what I would call it. It would definitely more of like a foresty forest green. Not an olive. Not an olive. Uh, this is the part of the video in which Becky gets a little butchy. All right, so the next three are, we've got indigo, ivory black, and brown umber. So they're a little more like neutrals. But let's grab some indigo. And indigo is uh, PB15 hole in one and PB66. It is, it is almost Payne's gray. I bet you could take this and mix a little bit of the ivory black and get a really nice Payne's gray. Ooh, or some. 
red. Let's add a little red to this. Be a nice paint gray. But there we go. More, more moody. More moody. Yeah. Like I like it. Ah, so cute. I just, I love, I love these colors. I love all of these colors. PBK nine. This is my black. Right here. And it is ivory black. And it is a very neutral black. And then the last one is brown umbered. Brown umber is PB15-1, PBR7, and PBK9. So it is three pigments all together. So pretty. It's like on this one, we had a burnt umber, but it was PR 101 and PBK 6, and it's really burnt umber, not brown umber. And then there was also a Van Dyke brown, and there was a sepia, and then a raw umber, and like all of these browns basically were replaced with some of these. I think they basically just said, hey, we trust you to be able to mix your own browns at that point, but we left you a little thing. This is probably close to the raw umber here, which is PY42 and PR101. It's not quite as red as the Van Dyke brown, and it's not as... Um, wheat is the sepia it's like a these two had a baby almost the van dyke and the raw umber but it could be nice for shadows and warm tone paintings and adding to things to to kind of brown them up a little bit um yeah yeah all right these are still wet so I am going to let all of these dry, and when I come back, they will be labeled and dried, and we'll go back over them and compare them with these other ones a little bit more. Um, and maybe I will finish these tonight, and then tomorrow I'll I'll uh, I'll do my photos, and we'll do some comparisons tomorrow, and I will edit those into this video at that point. So I'm going to get my my you are here swatches done tonight. And then we'll get that again. I'm really, really happy with this palette. I think it's going to be fantastic to paint with. Um, excited. Excited to use this blue. I am really excited about that. That's going to be, in fact, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to do something with this blue. I am just going to, this is for, I, I usually do a test of like a desert sunset with every new paint set that I get just to see just to see how it behaves. Um, but I've just got this extra space over here and I'm just gonna wet it. Just make it nice and wet. And this is Baohong Academy paper, by the way. Which I love. And where's my... In and Throne is this one right here. It's my In and Throne blue. I'm just going to grab it. And I have actually mixed almost this exact color from other paints together. Look how that blooms. Look how that blooms. 
it's just gorgeous. All right. Now. Yes, I keep salt at my desk, don't you? All right. Let's see what you do with that. I'm going to let this get salty and do whatever it's going to do. And then I'm going to see how it, how it behaves with the salts and uh and set this aside to dry too super fun super fun all right yeah so i'm gonna do my um desert painting i'm gonna wait for these to dry and label them and then tomorrow i'm gonna turn the camera back on and we will go over all of my swatches again see you then okay so i didn't do this overnight. I actually finished it up um, after work today, but I've got my locations swatched out and I love these. These will actually, uh, once I've got them um, laminated, I can situate them between them and I can stack these uh, while they get put away on a shelf. But I wanted to show you guys the little paintings that I did, I usually, with, when I get new paints, I will paint a variation of this. It's just, it tells me, like, whether or not they blend well, if there's layer well, and um, other things like that. And I actually, I like it. It was easy to work with. Um, I didn't actually do a lot of color mixing because the colors that came straight from it were great for this. Um, and this is just the Indana Throne. I, uh, sprinkled on some, uh, what is it called? The thing, bleed proof white. I actually got a couple spots over here, but that's okay because it's not like a professional picture. It's just a test picture. Um, and yeah, I, I love it. Um, I sketched a few snowflakes into this. Uh, I actually mixed a blue just like this from other blues. Um, and there it is just sitting there like this pigment that is exactly the blue that I wanted it to be. Anyway, <laughs> hold on, let me turn on my light so you guys can see everything better. Better, better. So <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with this. I love this blue. It is the best blue. But uh, I went ahead and because these have dried, I went ahead and labeled all of them with the color and the uh, the pigment. Um, so they are ready to go. I'm going to just leave this here for a sec so you can look at it if you want to have that information. Screenshot it. Do whatever you need to do. Um, I'm going to take some photos of these um, with not this camera so that the pictures and the the colors show up more truly the way that they they actually look uh like this is a deeper blue than this that's a very bright blue on my camera but it's a deeper blue in person and this is a brighter violet in person so i'll take a photos i'll take photos of these um and i'll put them as as a uh, probably maybe do an intro and an outro card um, of these photos so that they're more visible for the beginning and end of this, but I will leave this here for a minute if you want to screenshot it and take a look at it um, with that. I've got the pigment information and um, the names of each of these, and I am just so pleased. I have zero, zero regrets about purchasing this. Um, I'd say it is on par with most of the professional paint sets that I have and say it's even better than some like better than Windsor Newton for sure better than Windsor Newton professional um if I had to choose between spending money on this and spending on money on a set of those who'd choose this um 
I don't know some of the other brands, if it's better than or on an equal footing. Um, I love Sennelier paints and I love working with them. Um, I have just as much fun painting with these as I do with the Sennelier's. Um, I haven't tried like M. Graham or any of those others. Um, I've got some Schminky that I want to swatch. I'll probably do a, a swatch video of that um, to see what, if I like that better or the same as this. But so far, I really, really like these. And I don't think you could go wrong with uh, lurging. If you've got, I guess, $75, $80 to spend on paints and you want a good variety of like most of these like at least two-thirds of this or single pigment a good variety of I guess high quality pigment too because I guess that's one of the reasons why it costs so much now <laughs> is because they're using better quality pigment um, but it is a good quality paint and I'm pleased with it I'm gonna give it a thumbs up no there we go <laughs> anyway let me know if you've tried these, um, if you want to try them. Uh, let's see what you think of them and how they compare. Um, you can leave a note and comment. I'm going to try and get a better picture of these so that they can be on the front and the back of, of this video. And you can get a better idea of what the colors actually look like. Because they are more vivid in person. They really are. Like this pyrrole red is one of my favorite reds right now. I love it so much. <laughs> and it's just, we're going to have fun. I'm going to have fun mixing colors with these. I'm going to have fun painting the straight colors with these. It's going to be great. I mean, most, I didn't mix any of these. I painted straight from the palette with all of these, like the purples, the entire, I didn't have to blend this, this sky. I just wet this area and just did little strips of the, the colors, pinks, and reds and oranges and yellows and it just it just did its own thing and I love that I love that <laughs> I didn't have to fight this paint to make it do what I wanted it to do it just did it that's 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 living the dream living the dream anyway I hope you guys have a great weekend um gonna try and get this uploaded tonight or tomorrow and bye